Hi everybody! It's that time again! Thirty seconds to places. Shalone, I'm Donnie. How many people are praying today? Just me. All by your Lone Star? No problem. First off, let's get your name. No. Really? You have no name? How on Portugal? Let's see. You're gonna be precious. Based on the novel push by Sapphire. Great, now I get to tell you the institutional. Okay. You will see a question. When you know the answer in serpitude, select the boutonniere next to it. There is a timer that's tick tockling away. That means the sooner you are to buzz in, the more De Niro you'll make. Ah! Or Squeender. Okay, folks, we're getting close. Ten seconds. Happy trials. How about a heart check? Six. Five. Even a little fast there, isn't it? Three. In order for some rides to work, you must consciously think that you are riding them. This is okay. Cookie, and I've spent years of my life trying to decipher the meaning of the lyrics to Toto's Africa. It's you and me, that's how I like it. And today's wrong answer of the game is brought to you by... Oops. The Red Council. From Rudolph to Russia, we are the Red Council. Try to choose the wrong answer brought to you by our sponsor to get prizes and cash. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens. Right off the bat. Oh, no, you didn't. Suppose speed skater Apollo Anton Ono falls down and his body reacts just like the character who always says, Oh no! What will happen? He'll bounce off the ice like rubber, he'll break into tiny pieces like glass, he'll get squished like clay, or he'll turn green and angry. What is that, Mr. Bill? Probably. The character who says, Oh no! is Mr. Bill, the lovable clay figurine who's always getting his body squished by one thing or another. Or melted. Another similarity is that Mr. Bill wears red, white, and blue, just like Apollo Ono. Am I right? USA! 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 <laughs> Come on, say it with me. USA! US... No? No. US... Yeah, okay. Next. <laughs> say hello to... Young Vampires in Love. Ugh. In case you haven't read the books, the vampires in Twilight... The vampires sparkle like diamonds. What would vampire Edward Cullen look like if his diamond sparkle were GIA certified as grade E for Edward? A colorless vampire, a near colorless vampire, a faint yellow vampire, or a yellow vampire? Grade E? Um, no clue. Oh, let's faint yellow, I guess, huh? There's some faint yellow where your score was because you just pissed it away. It was begging to be picked. According to the diamond color grading scale established by the Gemological Institute of America, E-grade diamonds are colorless. Hmm. And E-grade diamonds are friggin' expensive. I know this because I've had several costly failed engagements. I think I'm gonna go read Breaking Dawn one more time. Ain't enough Twilight jokes in the world. This one's called Cause I'm a Rocket Duck. What do Scrooge McDuck and Sir Elton John have in common? They both dropped out of school, they were both born in Scotland, they were both named after Dickens characters, or they both are terrorized by the Beagle Boys. Hmm. Were they both born in Scotland? You really took out that question's no. innards and boiled it in its own stomach. Ah! Here's where the money is. Both are self-made men as they dropped out of school at early ages. Which just goes to show you kids that the only thing standing between you and a massive bin of money to swim in is school. Everybody quite drunk. Everybody quite drunk. Hey. I don't think Try I want to learn exercise. that lesson. Well, you sure smell fishy, and it's a dis or dat. Need to make up some money. I'm gonna read off seven animals. For each one, tell me if it's definitely a fish, or if it's definitely not a fish. If it's a fish, press one. If it's not a fish, press two. Okay. Each one right nets you 300 keepers. Get it wrong, and I'll throw back 300. Make it fast. You don't want this one to get away. Okay, let's fish move. Fish or not a fish? Jellyfish. Cuttlefish. 
I don't even know. Starfish. Crayfish. No. Shellfish. Fish. What? Eel. Eel's a fish? I've just revoked your fishing license. Wow. It's interesting how they have the word fish in their names, but aren't actually fish. It's like a grapefruit. It's neither a grape nor a fruit. Actually, Cookie, a grapefruit is a fruit. I hate you, Chad. Where's the bomb girl? Rock my world, girl. Wow. Ooh, yeah. This is not a good episode for Coming me, folks. Up. And introducing Brad Zapp with the, 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 the son. What? Which difficult celebrity name have I misspelled? Jake Gyllenhaal, Shia LaBeouf, Scarlett Johansson, or Zach Galifianakis? I think Gyllenhaal. No, Shia LaBeouf is probably misspelled. But Scarlett? The red? Maybe? No, no, I'll get that. I got it! Shia LaBeouf is the only name here that is misspelled. Next up, how to pronounce Chu the tell I Gia for. Nah, that's spelled right. <laughs> but before you start seeing red, you should know that picking Scarlet has won you the color red from the Red Council. Because every other color sucks. This wrong answer of the game has earned you four thousand dollars. I don't spend mind in one red, place. but I like blue. <laughs> Round one is in the books. And you're doing pretty well. Probably because there's no competition. Yeah, this time there is anyway. Oof. Keep in mind, all the prizes are doubled in round two. Now get out there and make me proud. I need Open it. wide for Choo Choo Meet Virginia. What train whistle sequence would notify the band Train that their career is going backwards? This, 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 or this? Short whistles, isn't it? Three short whistle toots means the train is backing up. In other words, Train's concert tour would sound something like this. Hello, New York! I mean... Hello, Toledo. Hello, Southland Shopping Center. Question seven. Bucker up for internal temperatures. Our interns bought me this cooking thermometer for when I grill because they kept on getting salmonella. I guess it was nice, but I tried to tell them I'm doing that on purpose. Okay, say <laughs> I didn't want to get an intern violently ill. <laughs> Okay, sorry, let me start over. Okay, say I didn't want to get an intern violently ill. What should be the minimum internal temperature of the chicken we'll be having at our next staff cookout? 98 degrees Fahrenheit, 165 degrees Fahrenheit, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, or 320 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, I don't want it to go incinerate, but I believe 165, wasn't it? The USDA recommends chicken be cooked to 165 degrees to kill salmonella and other harmful bacteria. I guess I should stop giving the interns food poisoning. A part of me will miss it, but this does free up my schedule enough to fit in some flogging. Oh, hello! Unpaid help! I want to show you something! Come here, you! Oh, look at how cute they are when they're scared. Flogging <laughs> chicken is picking out a mate. I call this one Epic Fall. You know, I'm I'm really not hungry, so maybe we could skip doing the cookies fortune this time around. Epic maybe do a fall? trash question or a uh cookie fortune, cookie fortune, cookie Nope, cookie. Okay. Okay, fine. Mm. Well, you know, I'm putting on a lot of weight because of these questions. Let's just get to the fortune. Mm. No man is a failure who is enjoying life. <laughs> Whatever. Which of these failures is enjoying Milton Bradley's game of life? George Costanza rolling dice, Willie Loman pulling a chance card, Wiley e. Coyote spinning a numbered wheel, or you popping the Popomatic bubble? It knows I'm a failure. But it's Wiley. E. The game of life doesn't use dice or that weird bubble from the game Trouble. It uses a spinning wheel embedded in the middle of the game board. 
I hate playing life with Wiley e. Coyote. I always get distracted by the free bird seed signs he leaves on the board. One of these days he'll catch the Roadrunner. It's well, time for Dardy Dargar. Suppose Charles Darwin's famous world traveling ship gets bought and renamed for advertising purposes. Which new name would keep the same breed of dog in the ship's original name? HMS Marmaduke, HMS Odie, HMS Snoopy, or HMS Fred Bassett? It was the Beagle, wasn't it? Snoopy is a Beagle, and Darwin sailed on the HMS Beagle. So then you'd have a ship named after Snoopy and then that MetLife blimp with Snoopy on it. All they need now is to paint a Snoopy on every car in America. Hold me, never let me go. I wouldn't object to that. And now, I'm from the future and I need pants. So I've been thinking I'd like to do some time traveling, but I'm not really comfortable with public nudity. Which time travel method is the safest bet if I don't want people in other time periods seeing my junk? The one from the Terminator movies, the one from 12 Monkeys, the one from the time traveler's wife, or the one from Time Cop? Eh, uh, no, one in four leave you naked. Let's go with three. Hey, I'm not gonna be running around with my Eric Bana nah, no. dangling for everyone to see. I don't remember 12 Wanna monkeys, Wanna see the so. answer? Time travel what? requires some nudity in the Terminator, 12 Monkeys, and the Time Traveler's huh. Wife. But in Time Cop, it just requires you to ride in some weird crash test simulator I thingy. I thought Time Cop was another naked one. It also oh, well. requires you to be Jean-Claude Van Damme, which is too high a price. Too high a price. Indeed. Hammer. Brace yourself for the attack. When you see two clues that match, press one. Four thousand if you're right, but if you're wrong, you lose four thousand. And one more thing. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Can I interest you in a threesome? Okay, I'll start off with an easy one. Ready, uh... set, go. Oh, okay. Well, he did start us off with an easy one. Arithmetic? Where is it? No. Louie, 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 where are you, Louie? Stop, drop, and roll. Which I need, because I got burned this episode. Snap, crack, one, pop. Ah! Froze on me. That's what I get for looking back. You did the peep to the Santa Maria. That was a mean one, game. Earth, wind, and fire. Okay. That's all she wrote! That was just beautiful. Stunning. No, I'm serious. I've never felt this way before. I mean, you're so free out there, vibrant, wild. I, I, I need to draw you. You don't know Jack! Yeah. <laughs> That'll do it, folks. What's going on, Donnie? All right, give me the hey sign if you're interested in more playage. This week, Add on that Racist to the Twilight Doctor. question, and I'm creeped out That's this episode, folks. Him. Tried everything. Okay. Isn't it obvious? This first round Luke kicked my ass. Second round, I rebounded on and came away with a not Why? terrible he's a score. He's a terrible racist. But he's an amazing Mainly because Doctor. of the Jack Don't attacks. But the season he, finale you know. of Racist Doc. So anyway, give it to me straight, Doc. This has been I'm another week of live? Let's Play. I you don't know I'll Jack. Do my power to save you, so you can keep Tune in again next week for more of this. Uh, and now it's time for me to go. And as always, I'd leave you with the commercials. You suffered a pretty severe blow to the head after that last surgery. I think I. May be losing my ability to be racist. Racist doctor. Oh, Janice, how do you keep your skin looking so youthful? Well, I'll let you in on my secret if you promise to keep it under your hat. This is not my real face. 
It's a mask! Forever Young Baby Disguise is perfect for those who long for those wrinkle-free days of youth. And it's so simple. Just a color photo of a baby's face blown up and printed on 100% recycled cardboard. Simply apply the mask with tape and voila! You have a baby face. <laughs> and here I thought you were just naturally youthful. No! And it's so much cheaper than surgery! Here, try one! Wow! I can already tell that people are looking at me differently. Thanks to Forever Young Baby Disguise, I can hold my head up high. Poor Alice, stuck at home doing chores. Housework sure can be tiring, huh, Alice? But robot maids today can be so expensive. Well, why not try a reformed evil robot from the reformed robot house cleaning company? Oh, sure, these robots used to be programmed to wipe out the human race, but now they're programmed to wipe out grime and mildew. Let's watch. The mop is in the front closet, reformed evil robot. Must kill human. Excuse me? Uh, I mean, must clean bathroom. Good evil robot. So visit the folks at reformed robot house cleaning company, where we sweep evil under the rug. Extremely secretive and expensive government research suggests that cats like gum. More on that tonight. Hey, buddy. Hey, Jordan. Happy birthday. I know I usually forget to buy you anything, but this year I got you something from the cloud registry. The cloud registry? What's that? I got a cloud named after you. Oh. And it comes with a certificate of authentication that I printed out on my dot matrix printer. So which cloud is mine? What's that? Which cloud is named after me? Oh. Uh, that one. The one that sort of looks like a race car? Sure. Steve, did you just make this up because you forgot to get me something for my birthday? No! It's totally a real thing. Listen to this announcer. The cloud registry. Totally a real thing. You just did that by cupping your mouth in your hands. Well, happy birthday, buddy. Gotta go. Bye! Hey, get your friend a gift from the cloud registry. It's really a real thing. Meet Timmy. He's just like you or me. He likes to listen to music, play, make friends. The only difference is Timmy doesn't have a mother or father. Timmy's an orphan. Hi, I'm Timmy, uh, Tim. My parents died in a tragic car accident when I was just 42. In retrospect, maybe I wasn't in any condition to drive. Anyway, uh, will you be my new mommy or daddy? I promise to be a good son. I'll keep my room clean and eat all my vegetables, except for lima beans. Those things give me horrendous farts. Uh, I'll need a car. And it'd be great if you had an extra room or a basement for my drums. There are thousands of Timmies out there just waiting to find their forever home. If you're ready to start a new-ish family, call the It's Never Too Late Adult Orphanage. Because grown-ups are children too. <laughs> 